Hey Legends Nation, I'm Decker Branch, joined by head coach George Galanopoulos, who is uh, going into his third season with the Texas Legends. A little deep dish conversation with head coach G. George, you're from Chicago, you know we had to do this right. Yeah, if there's one way to entice me to do an interview and drive 30 minutes for it, it's with some deep dish pizza, so glad to be here, Decker. We're going to start off by uh, unveiling the deep dish pizza. It looks pretty good. I, I mean... It smells even better, right? Yeah, it, it does look good. I think this is going to be a good experience for us. All right, I'm going to grab the first slice, um, try to tear it. Oh, yeah, that's, I mean, that's pretty juicy. Now, this is an important question from a Chicagoan to a Texan. Mm -hmm. Are you going to eat this with a fork and a knife, or are you going to eat it like a normal piece of pizza? How about I try to eat it like a normal piece of pizza first? Be my guest. All right, cool. It's personal preference. I don't know if it's going to work, though. What do we think? It's doable. I would eat it regular. And this thing is really good. I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. Now, how about we start with the deep dish conversation? Uh, first Shoot. question. Has basketball always been your favorite sport? Or did you grow up playing other sports? I grew up playing other sports. I really loved baseball. I think at one point in my life when I was a youngster, I liked baseball more than basketball. But as I got older, I started to play more. Dad uh, put a basketball hoop on the driveway when I was about six years old, fell in love with it from that point on. And then once I got to high school, that's when I really started to play basketball more. And that's when I started to coach as well when I was about 17 years old. So I was playing and coaching younger wow. kids at that time. Yeah, and then the rest is history. When I was a freshman, I was like the last player in the program, like off the bench for like the third team. Like I wasn't very good at all. And I was going to quit basketball and play baseball. And in the end of the year meeting with the coaches, they give you a, like an evaluation sheet and you're rated one through five, five being the best, one being the worst at like all these different things, ball handling, this, that shooting. All of my skill stuff was like two, one and a half, like, Rightfully so, and I was pretty dejected about it. And there was a section for heart and desire, and it was a two out of five. And I was a pretty hard worker, I just wasn't very good. Um, and that really pissed me off. Like to the point where I left, and I was, I was so irate about it that I went home and told my mom and my dad that I was quitting baseball and I was going to try out for the team the next year. And that I was going to play all summer and, you know, if they could help me go to clinics and camps and stuff. And I ended up making the team sophomore year. Wow. And then I ended up coaching after that. That's so, really cool. Yeah. That's, that's a, a true story of perseverance. I'm going to need you to persevere a little bit more on this slice of pizza. Because <laughs> you are taking forever, buddy. <laughs> I'm, I'm usually a fast eater. I'm trying to be respectful <laughs> to the crowd here. Okay. What was your favorite Legends memory thus far? Our win against the Birmingham squadron at home, I think in mid-March, it was an overtime win. Um, I've never coached in a basketball environment like that in my life. Plenty of pressure. Now back to Jones. Outside to Hunt. Fake. Jackson. Olin Carter. Three. Good! Olin Carter! Rebound picked up by Jones. He's driving. Alley oop to Hunt. Dagger, ladies and gentlemen. And the crowd being into it, it was a come from behind victory. Um, the players were into it. it. It was just such an incredible team. When at one point I remember going into overtime, I think when the stresses and pressures are supposed to be at their highest, they had the music blaring, you know, the jumbotron was going, the crowd was going crazy. Just had a moment where I really appreciated kind of the environment, the atmosphere that we were in. Um, and it was so much fun. Olin Carter hit a big three to put us up at the end of the game. And my family was there too, um, you know, with my little nephew. So it was a really cool experience. Uh, to me, that was just the best, best moment, the best I had felt just being a part of, of this, something, something so much greater than any individual, you know, goal or accomplishment, so. Something that might be a little bit annoying, getting a little deeper here. Your, your last name is, I mean, kind of hard to pronounce for, you know, the average United States citizen. Okay? Sure. Yeah. What's the funniest pronunciation of your last name that you've ever heard? Oof. Um, I had a high school teacher who used to call me Galapagos. 
Um, I'm pretty sure he didn't know. He didn't think it was that. Right. right. That's what he used to call me. Galifianakis is another one. Like Zach? Like Zach Galifianakis, wow. yeah. Um, you look just like him. No, I'm just kidding. I really appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I had a high school teacher when they were doing attendance in the beginning of class, in the beginning of the year, uh, pronounce it Galicaropolis, and there's no K, and there's no R. So, so that was fun. <laughs> wow. Um, I just told her to call me George, and we were fine after that, but yeah. That'll you know, be- pe- people butcher it. I think, it's, I think it's easier to say than it actually looks. It looks a little intimidating, but it's not too bad. All right, let's, let's get another slice. I'm, I'm still hungry. I'm still working on mine because I got to answer the questions. No, I know, I know. You're I'll asking the time. questions I'll, and then I'll you're just devouring time. the pizza. Right, I know. I figure. I mean, it's going cold. You don't want it to be cold, right? Fair. Do Chicagoans eat cold pizza? Yeah. Next morning. I'm not microwaving it. All right. I'm eating it cold. Yeah, down here in Texas, man, we like stuff hot. I could use a little bit of spice on this, I think. Maybe some, like, cayenne pepper or something. Cayenne pepper. I'm a big fan of throwing extra Parmesan cheese on there, probably a little too much. It gets excessive, but yeah, cayenne pepper, whatever you want. We're, we're creeping into the deep end of the pool here, okay? If you're in a bad mood, do you like to be left alone or cheered up? Huh. Um, probably de- depends who's trying to cheer me up. It's if- your mother. <laughs> As much, <laughs> as much as I love her, she should probably leave me alone. Okay. But for the most part, if I like you, I wouldn't mind you trying to cheer me up. Okay. If I don't like you, you should probably just leave me alone. I think my mother <laughs> is, is a special case in the exception of the rule. I love you, Mom. I really do. <laughs> All right, George. What is the most nervous you've ever been in your life? Oof. Um, Michael Jordan basketball camp, 2000. He chose me to shoot a free throw in front of the entire camp to win a pair of his shoes. No way. And I walked up there. I thought I was a good free throw shooter. And I took two dribbles. My legs were numb. I couldn't feel my hands or my arms, and I airballed the free throw in front of 450 kids. <laughs> you were so close, George. So close, yet so yeah, far so away. Far. Yeah, it's just you know I was, I was short too. You know I was only a fifth grader, but like, it it just looked so high up and so far, and I couldn't feel my limbs and. Yeah, that was tough. I became a better free throw shooter after that, though. I don't know who is more nervous. You at that free throw line with Michael Jordan or me on this camera right now trying to eat with my mouth closed? (laughs) (laughs) Well, we're going to finish it off with one last question. We were not able to finish this pizza. If you're watching at home, deep dish is no joke. I mean, these things are big slices. Got the best to you, huh? Got the best to me. I don't think I'm even going to touch this one that's on my plate right here. But I want to know, what is the lowest point in your coaching career? But also, let's finish with what the highest point in your coaching career has been. Okay. Um, The lowest point of my coaching career, I'd say, was when I was working for the Bakersfield Jam. That was an NBA D-League team at the time. It was uh, the 2013-14 season. And we were bought by the Phoenix Suns. And they got a whole new staff and they overhauled their basketball operations department. So I was out of a job. So that summer I went to summer league looking for other opportunities. Uh, I did not do a very good job of doing that and didn't cast a wide enough net. And by the time November rolled around and the season started, I was without an opportunity. Um, and that was, that was pretty hard to accept. You know, it was heartbreaking. I ended up getting an opportunity uh, about nine or 10 months later with the, with the Dallas Mavericks as a player development intern. And, uh, been here ever since. Now we're eating Chicago deep dish pizza, talking about the lowest point in my career. Um, Besides that, I would say the the highest point in my career, there's been a couple different ones. Number one was being hired as the head coach of the Texas Legends. And 
the reason why I point to that specifically is not just for me personally, but that moment has allowed me to experience some unbelievable moments. Um, I'd say the other one is coaching Uganda. We were in Afro Basket in 2021. And when we beat Nigeria to go to the quarterfinals, which is the furthest that we've ever advanced in that tournament, we ended up placing sixth. Uh, the outreach that we felt from the people of Uganda about how inspiring it was that we were able to beat Nigeria. Just to hear from so many people that were living in Uganda about what inspiration our players have been to their kids. We got text messages and, and direct messages from people explaining that their kids are now going to play basketball because of the success of our team. It was a high point because it made me realize along with the rest of our team, you know, our purpose and our why behind us playing and winning basketball games was so much deeper than, than just that. Right. Well, that's great, Coach. We appreciate you sitting down with us, doing the deep dish conversation with head coach George Galanopoulos. George, we're looking forward to this season. We know you're going to do a great job and uh, win us some games up here in Frisco. Thanks, Tech. I really appreciate it.